Okay, so I was looking around to see what lightweight OS I could use on one of these very cheap TikTok laptops. So this Coda 1.2, I've ordered from CCL Online, and uh, you can see it says 99 here, but through TikTok it's 69.99. Now, it comes with Windows 10S, it's gonna run Windows 10 horribly, but I figured I could try Linux on it and also Chrome OS Flex and maybe a bit of retro gaming. And uh, in my search for a lightweight operating system, I always like to see if there's a Linux operating system that I haven't tried before. And Sparky Linux came up, but I found a version for Raspberry Pi. So this video, because I haven't got the laptop yet, that's coming between October the 24th and October the 26th, I figured I'd download this version. So I've downloaded uh, Sparky Linux 6.4, the ARM HF version, which is the 32-bit version of this operating system for Raspberry Pi. And I've used Imager to write it to an SD card already. So we do choose OS and use custom. I didn't have to unzip it or anything like that. So I've written it to a 64-bit micro SD card, and let's have a look at what that looks like. Now, when I first started using this, I started using it as root, uh, and to log in as root, it's uh, root as the username and tour, uh, so root backwards as the password. And um, I was wondering what was going on because it was a really, really basic setup. So you can see that it comes up very, very basic, although you've got this weird bit on the bottom which uh, says desktop and if you click on it it's just got a bit of customization uh, don't worry this is just to show you what it's like it's not actually like this uh, if you if you log in normally but I wanted to show you how my experience was first of all and a few sort of disjointed icons down the bottom that don't really match the theme uh, and then if we right click on the desktop we get a very much uh, like MX Linux where you've got your menu and your applications and things like that but the actual operating system like this runs incredibly fast so if I call up this image viewer, um, it, is, it is really snappy and really fast to use. But let's uh, close this down because you shouldn't log in as root if you want to see what it's like. So if I go right click and exit and exit. So that takes us back to this and it's Pi and Sparky is the login that I found. I, I did have another login but it was wrong but this is the one that you log in with. So hit enter and this is how it's supposed to look. So we've got, it's changed the wallpaper to the Sparky wallpaper. We've got a menu icon, the bar looks fine as well. All the icons match up and everything. Although everything disappeared then, I think it's probably gonna come back. So if we click on the little menu one down the bottom here. That gives us a whole page of all our applications. Now, I've installed Raspberry Pi Imager and Gparted. I don't know why Imager is a massive icon. Uh, obviously everything else is fine on it and if we hit cancel and we go back to this right click menu so we've got file manager which doesn't seem to work for me uh, pc man which is the file manager doesn't seem to work but there is another file manager in there which is insight this one here and this one does work although i tried to use it in my previous video to change the config.txt on a, an external drive and i couldn't get it to show up the external drive so that was that was a bit of a weird experience for me so let's close that down and go back again so right click there's a lot of programs on here in fact i'm probably better to show you rather than do it this way probably better to show you that whole screen so again if you click on here all the applications come up. And one bit I really liked about this uh, was this Aptus App Center and the way that the theming works with it. And this bit doesn't close on its own, so I'll cancel that so it closes. And here we go. And uh, the bit that I really liked about it was desktops. Uh, so the App Center is is not, not the best looking. Uh, if we click on it, I think it might be right. Oh no, it's not right click. You can see we've got no icons or anything, but if I pick platform and see if we get anything come up, see they've all got Minecraft icons. Um, I mean, it is an, an app store and there are more app stores on here, but the one I really liked was the desktops one because this has loads of different desktop environments to install into this. So Sparky Linux is based on Debian, uh, like Ubuntu, like Raspberry Pi OS, uh, like loads of other operating systems. So compatibility is really good. Uh, and you can see that all these different desktops are here. Now I've already installed Lumina um, I did try, what did I try? I tried Draco uh, and I think I tried the Linux Mint one and I think they come up with a message that says you can't install them on this particular device. So they're probably more for X64 or X. Oh, Cinnamon's all right. 
Let's see what happens. Let's try and install it. Maybe because I've updated it now that it's working. So, oh, 416 megabytes. So I'll come back when that's all done. So I come back to this very relaxing screensaver. There's loads of screensavers in here. So let's press space. Uh, so if everything went well, your new desktop has been installed and configured. Right, okay, so let's exit from that and close that down. So if we go right click and exit and exit, that takes us to this login screen. So we can put in Pi and Sparky. And then up here, so there was two before, uh, default X session and Openbox were the original ones. When I installed Lumina, I got Lumina and Fluxbox. And now I've got Cinnamon and Cinnamon with software rendering. So let's try the normal Cinnamon one first and see what happens. So let's log in. And we're in. You can see we've got a lot more icons down the bottom here. Uh, we've got a different logo. Oh yeah, and all the apps and everything. I mean, this certainly, certainly I would say looks nicer. It's great to have that option to be able to very easily install themes and play around with themes to see what you think you're going to like. So we've got Terminal. We've got Settings. Uh, let's see if this files works. Yeah, that works. So that's probably using a different file manager. What does it tell you what it is? Is it about? Nemo. Right, so this theme has installed a different, so this isn't PC Man, which is the one that doesn't seem to work. Uh, so I've got three file managers on here, but yeah, this looks cool. Very impressive. And as you can see, it, it's, it certainly feels snappy. So we've got the Firefox web browser on here. Let's launch that. And I was using this before in my previous video. I'll just load up this page again with my blue pie. Uh, and yeah, it was it was working absolutely fine. Uh, feels a bit jerky, Firefox. I would probably install Chromium, um, but I know a lot of people prefer Firefox. And it seems to be working fine uh, without me having to pick the software rendered version of this. Uh, so let's just switch back into another theme. So if I, let's see if the right, yeah, so the, oh, the right click. Ah, changes, so we don't get the same launcher as we had before. So the one that was in the other desktop environment. Um, so if I just do it in, I guess, the more traditional way. Uh, so what have we got? Log out and log out. And let's log back in this time, but with Lumina and show you how that changes things. Said it was deleting something. You can see we've got some icons on the desktop here. Uh, very small taskbar at the bottom. If I right click, application. So this menu comes back with Lumina. Uh, and here we are, this is, uh, we've got some sort of incompatibility here because we've got the uh, Sparky Linux one and we've got this other desktop. Uh, it wasn't like this before. I wonder if I, let's log out. So this is Fluxbox, which was I think also on there to start off with. And you've got this crazy menu uh, and you can change the style of it. So you can see all of these very different, very dated looking, um, but very I, just interesting to see uh, that they've got all these different options. Yeah, so something like that is something very different. So then all of this, uh, so for instance, system, firewall configuration, hardware, system, utility, video, so yeah, really, really different looking, but it's nice, to, that's the thing about Linux, is having so many different options. So let's exit that. I'm gonna go back into the cinema one, because I quite like that one. And if we go back to the Aptus App Center again, and desktops, what else have I not tried? Well, let's try that Draco again, and see what it does, because I'm sure it came up with, ah, so if it's not gonna work, and this could be because this is an ARM-based system, so it might not have all the necessary things that it needs to work, um, but maybe on that little laptop that I've got coming, I could be I could be able to try that because it's a, an x64 um, operating system, which is generally more compatible with Linux. Uh, you know, with ARM, we need them to be adapted. So UK UI, should we try a bit of that? Yeah, that looks like it's going to install. And yes to continue. But while it's doing that, what does it do with? Oh, in fact, what happens if I press? Right. So Cinnamon also gives you the option that when you press the Windows key. And uh, if you're watching in my videos, I, I like that as a feature. I like to be able to press the Windows key and start typing and it gives me the app and I can launch it from the keyboard without having to move the mouse around in the same sort of way. So that's really nice to see. Uh, let's open a few things up. So G parted, uh, let's open that up and let's open up, what have we got under Office? Text editor and what else have we got? So we can go with calculator, 
and I guess we'll open the terminal as well. So what does it do as regards, so pressing the Windows key doesn't do anything with that. Then we've got, that shows the desktop. Oh, okay, so if you hover over it, it clears everything out. If you press it, it gets rid of it all. And have we got Windows snapping in Cinnamon? We have. Yeah, same sort of thing as I'd have with KDE. Yeah, that seems to work all right. Now, I didn't find a 64-bit version, uh, and I think 64-bit versions, well, in loads of tests I've done, 64-bit versions perform better on the Pi 4, the CM4, and the Pi 400. Older Pis, maybe you go for the 32-bit version, so Pi 0, 2W, my original Pi 1, uh, maybe will work with this. It'd be interesting to see. But you can see that, yeah, everything's launching. Uh, it's a nice sort of standard thing that, you know, anybody who's used Windows for a long period of time wouldn't struggle with. That's that's all very, very straightforward, very, very clear. And obviously, as I install different desktop environments, I start installing multiple versions of various different things. But you could start off with a basic OS and obviously, you know, work out what theme you're going to use and just stick with that rather than uh, start installing loads and loads of themes and get loads of different versions of terminals and loads of different versions of uh, file managers and things like that. But I... It's nice to be able to mess about, and that's a great thing with the Pi in that you can just swap out, use another SD card, and experiment with things. There you go. If everything went well, your desktop has been installed. I did something like this with all the uh, Ubuntu variations a while ago, where I installed Kubuntu and Lubuntu and all the others. Right, so let's log out, and we'll log back in with UKUI. Got a nice long list there now. Okay, it's struggling with the task. <laughs> it's struggling with the taskbar because this bar is showing up. I guess I would need to do some sort of customization, which is a shame because it was starting to look really nice. So uh, let's have a look at the files. Yeah, nice and bright, nice and clear, nice and very under easy to understand. Uh, yeah, it's a shame we got that double interface. So if I just hover above it, yeah, that's a nice looking desktop environment. Nice and clear, very crisp, nice big font. So let's go uh, back to the web browser. <laughs> I don't know what to, I don't know what to use now because I've installed too many things and they're overlapping. Uh, so yeah, Firefox. Let's do a search for Sparky Linux. Go to their main website. So you can see the standard OS looks like this, which I did get somewhere near it. Um, never had this logo, um, but I did have somewhere somewhere near that sort of look. So they've called it Sparky 22.10. Whereas mine is 6.4. So what happens if I go to downloads and stable? I've got a link for the Raspberry Pi image in there anyway. It doesn't say what version it is there. Like, oh, but that's, that talks about 6.4. Yeah, that talks about 6.4 as well. Sparky Linux created on top of the Debian operating system. Sparky is fast, lightweight, and fully customizable OS, which offers a few versions for different users and different tasks. So I'll put links to all this in the description, um, but it's, it's been nice to play around with. Uh, as I say, it started off looking a bit more like MX Linux, which I really like as an operating system. But uh, yeah, I will, I, I'm sure I'll try this on this, uh, this laptop when I get it, but it's great to have another OS on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. More than likely you've recently seen quite a lot of videos showing this very inexpensive laptop on TikTok. You can't deny it's a very very low price for a laptop. But just a heads up, the Intel Celeron N3450 processor was a very low spec processor when it was released six years ago. On CPU user benchmark it is ranked 1288th out of 1364 processors number one being the fastest. I'm guessing it probably can't run Windows 11 or it would come with that already. It's also not going to be something I'd recommend for using Microsoft Office with. It comes with a year of free Office. But it is a good price. I've ordered one and I'm going to try and run Linux on it and Chrome OS Flex. But I'm also going to use it for some retro gaming and uh, give it a test with Windows as well. So subscribe to my channel if you want to know more. Lee PSP video on YouTube and TikTok.